This is why Ilkay Gundogan rejoining Man City is transfer of the summer. I think it's got huge repercussions for Man City on a tactical level going into this season. Uh, but we're going to have to start off with an overview of what is one of the most exciting and interesting transfers so far this summer. Man City is signing a world-class midfielder who's 34 years old. I know it's a little bit old for some people, but not for me. If you know what Ilkay Gundogan's about, it's not about his athleticism. It's about his brain. It's about how intelligent he is as a footballer. So the age does not concern me at all. You're getting him for two years. One of them is a kind of one-year deal with an extra option on top of that of an extra year for free. How can you improve one of the best club sides in Europe? Uh, maybe a generational club side. The defence is completely packed out, full of young talent and players in their prime. The keeper, uh, Haaland's the best striker uh, in the world, in my opinion. De Bruyne's still there, Foden's still there, Bernardo Silva's still there. How do you improve that side that's littered with young talent as well? I think it is a feel-good transfer that brings massive, um, it brings massive morale and romance back to the club. It's not that the club necessarily needs it. But if you're going for those top-tier titles, we're talking about five Premier League titles in a row. You're talking about winning a second Champions League in three years, which I think City are more than capable of doing. We're only a few penalty kicks away from really winning the Champions League last season. Let's be honest, because I think whoever wins between Man City and Real Madrid probably wins the Champions League like Real Madrid uh, justifiably did last season. Ilkay Gundogan adds to that. Ilkay Gundogan brings so much energy, so much confidence to a, a Man City side littered with confident players already. So that's why I think it's, it's, a, it's an amazing deal uh, as an overview. But let's talk about the tactics of Ilkay Gundogan joining Manchester City. I think the club last season really struggled against sides that had this kind of really high press, high and wide press with the wingers and the strikers and midfielders all pressing in a line. And it stopped the likes of De Bruyne influencing games at the highest level and obviously De Bruyne came off in big games like Arsenal when they did that um, uh, City struggled against Chelsea when they did that against Liverpool as well so when this press has kind of been invoked against Man City Man City I think last se uh, last season struggled and that's why I think Guardiola has gone back to this kind of winger approach because I think the likes of Savinho Oscar Bob when he's fit and Doku will stretch sides so if you can bypass the press there'll be so much space in behind uh, the midfield of the opposition and that's where I think Ilkay Gundogan's got a huge role to play because De Bruyne is not going to play 50 games a season if City go far in the Champions League with the new format uh, and obviously all the other com competitions you're looking at 55 60 games in all competitions it's outrageous and De Bruyne for me looks like a player who's slightly uh, losing his physicality I don't think he's losing his brain or his technique or his touch but he's losing his physicality he can't play I don't think he can play 40 games a season I really don't at the highest level and I think Ilkay Gundogan's probably in the same boat. So I think the first thing for me is that kind of rotational discussion that I think De Bruyne and Ilkay Gundogan can rotate in that kind of axis uh, just ahead of Rodri with Bernardo in mid midfield, with Phil Foden in midfield. So on that level, I think it has uh, a massive role to play. Obviously, Man City signed two midfielders last summer, uh, Mateus Nunes and Kovacic. Now, obviously, Kovacic had a good game against Chelsea, probably his best game in a City shirt. But there's always this, this thing with Kovacic where he has a, a lack of maybe that kind of firepower, a lack of execution in the final third. I know he scored, but it's a very rare goal at Stamford Bridge. Ilkay Gundogan, when you bypass that press, has got the ability to score from anywhere. He has that ability to arrive in the box. A bit like how we talk about Jude Bellingham for Real Madrid. Um, the ability to arrive in the box and score those big goals. And you have to say, the reason City won the treble last season is because... Um, uh, two seasons ago is because uh, Ilkay Gundogan arrived in the box and put massive pressure uh, on the opposition uh, and the kind of rebounds that kind of came to the edge of the box. Look at Rodri against Inter Milan, the volley that uh, Ilkay Gundogan scored to open the scoring at Wembley against Manchester United. These are huge goals from midfield. And maybe when we talk about Haaland not influencing games to the highest level, when he's being completely man-marked by Rudiger in the Champions League quarterfinal last season, as an example then you need someone like Ilkay Gundogan who's got a far better touch, uh, but a far better eye for goal than Mateus Nunes, who obviously hasn't worked, and of course, uh, Kovacic himself. There are so many opportunities against Chelsea in the first game of the Premier League season where De Bruyne operating on that left-hand side, that little pocket of space just ahead of where Rodri will be, obviously where Rico Lewis and where Kovacic were in, in the game. 
but that little left-hand side pocket of space where David Silva found so much joy for Guardiola, where De Bruyne did against Maresca's Chelsea. So I think that that will be a massive role to play uh, in the upcoming season because you've got so much width from Savinho on one side, Oscar Bob on the other, and Doku, that all the space in the midfield is going to get bigger and bigger. Look at some of the spaces that De Bruyne had in the first game. And I, again, I think Ilkay Gundogan will operate closer into that kind of uh, territory than a lot of people are saying. I think people are suggesting he'll play as a six and replacement for Rodri. I don't see that at all. And as a City fan, I, I, I never quite like Ilkay Gundogan as a six. Obviously, he can do a job there, um, but I'm not a massive proponent of playing Ilkay Gundogan as a six. I see this as that kind of adding quality into the final third from midfield, someone who can score goals and create goals in a similar way to De Bruyne, similar way to David Silva, similar way to Phil Foden and Bernardo Silva. I think Pep Guardiola just wants to add more quality so that they can all be rotated. They can all be rested and be fresh for these moments instead of just relying on De Bruyne every single game to find that killer pass. You've got so many more options there. Um, and I think the wingers are going to uh, allow Ilkay Gundogan to have so much joy in midfield, to be so creative. And all the work from the four centre-backs behind him, maybe uh, it's Rico Lewis instead of four centre-backs, but all the work that those four centre-backs uh, are going to do it can allow Ilkay Gundogan not to necessarily work as hard going back as well. Um, I think he's going to love playing in this new Man City formation with those two wingers that love bombing on and creating all that space for Ilkay Gundogan. I'm just going to put some 11s on the screen, which I think are City's best 11s if you include Ilkay Gundogan in there as well. Again, I don't think it's an Ilkay Gundogan at the base of midfield kind of situation. I think it. I think I see Guardiola going back to that kind of classic Sterling Sane Aguero front three where there's so much pace, so much width. I think it's going to bring a lot of joy to Erling Haaland, who didn't have a flat season last season. He was, he was incredible in terms of the amount of goals he scored. But I think he'll want to get more out of Erling Haaland, particularly in those big games. And if Erling Haaland does get man-marked by Rudiger again, man-marked by Van Dijk in the Liverpool game, Saliba in the Arsenal game, then that kind of drop-off, that ball that kind of rebounds out, can it be at the feet of Ilkay Gundogan instead of Mateus Nunes, instead of Kovacic, instead of Rico Lewis? Sometimes in life, you get the opportunity to uh, relive the memories, relive the glory years. And I think it's completely justified in Man City's case. Ilkay Gundogan's going to have a huge role for City. And he's going to bring leadership. He's going to raise the bar of a side that are already at top of their game. And I think by even by doing that by 1%, by 5% for free, it is a no brainer for the value in the market for certain midfielders you're talking 100 million pounds for, for some players Ilkay Gundogan for free it's outrageous I think it says a lot about where Man City are that Man City can win everything um, allow Ilkay Gundogan the move of his dreams not stand in the way do it in a very classy affair and Ilkay Gundogan after 12 months in one of the most beautiful cities in the world one of the biggest clubs in the world a club that is obviously bigger than Man City in terms of uh, history and success in European football he still sits there and says, I want to come back to the City project. I'm prepared to throw away uh, wages after uh, a couple of years. He, he's thrown away a, a couple of years' salary to rejoin Man City. The sporting project is so integral, is so important uh, for players like Ilkay Gundogan. I think it's got a massive ringing endorsement for where Man City are as a sporting entity, as a sporting project. It is massive. And I think Man City are now that much closer to being you know, stronger favourites to retain in the Premier League title yet again. And of course, the Champions League. This, for me, screams like a transfer uh, where the kind of marginal gain of bringing in Ilkay Gundogan, potentially moving on someone like Mateus Nunes, that marginal gain, I think, uh, moves the City side closer to winning a second Champions League. Whether it's uh, Guardiola's last transfer and first transfer, we'll have to debate that in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. Make, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you very, very soon.